Hello, and welcome to Mr. Shaver Virtual Lesson. Please make sure you have the uh, sheet to read along as I'm reading too. All right, let's begin. How do solutions form? Why do some substances mix easily to form homogeneous mixtures, solutions, while others do not mix at all? For instance, salt will easily dissolve in water, but not in ethanol. To answer this question, we need to revisit the particle theory. So think back to when we did the salt and ethanol experiment. You put salt and ethanol and it sank to the bottom and nothing really happened, which didn't seem very exciting, but it kind of is because nothing happened. Why not? When you put salt in water, it dissolves. But salt and ethanol did not have any sort of reaction at all. It didn't magically disappear or dissolve. Let's find out why. Let's look at paragraph number two. As we know, all things are made out of atoms and molecules. Juice crystals are made out of billions of these tiny particles, and they are a solid because their particles are attracted to each other. However, when these juice crystals are placed in water, the sugar molecules will dissolve because they are more attracted to the water particles than they are to each other. Since the attractive forces between the sugar and the water is greater, they separate from the other particles of sugar, and this process continues until the sugar completely dissolves into the water, or the solute completely dissolves into the solvent. Can you now explain why salt does not dissolve in ethanol? So, when we put salt in water, the salt is a solid, it is attracted to each other, there are attractive forces between these particles. But when the water comes by, the salt's like, oh snap, look at the water over there. It's got like cool hair and sunglasses and like, you know, a sweet leather jacket. I'm way more attracted to that water than I am to the other salt particles. As the water comes by, it's more attracted and it'll pick it up and take it along with it. And that's what dissolving is. When there's a greater attractive force between the particles that are in the water there, the sugar, the salt, whatever it may be, and that substance, water or ethanol. So why does salt not dissolve in ethanol? Well, salt isn't really attracted to ethanol. It's like, sorry, ethanol, let's just be friends. Like, you know, you, you smoke, you kind of dropped out of high school. I'm not really interested, sorry. So uh, salt does not dissolve in ethanol, but salt is attracted to water, so it will dissolve in water. Have you ever put oil in water? Oil will not dissolve. It'll float on top. It'll stay together in little globs. Uh, but you put oil in ethanol, and it will dissolve. Oil is not attracted to water particles, but it is attracted to ethanol particles, and it will break down, and it will dissolve. Uh, let's look at paragraph number three, because we introduced two new scientific words, solute and solvent. Let's find out more about those. Uh, every homogeneous mixture has a solute and a solvent. The solute, sugar, salt, is a substance that dissolves, and there tends to be less of it. The solute is cute. I'll explain that one in a second. The solvent, water or ethanol, is the substance that the solute will dissolve into. Water is considered to be the universal solvent since it is so commonly used, and the first ingredient of anything you drink will be water. So let's go back and look at this. So the solute is the part of a homogeneous mixture that will dissolve. That's the one that will dissolve into another substance. Now, uh, and then sol, uh, the solvent is what it will get dissolved into. So solvent and solute are like heterogeneous and homogeneous. They're not hard to figure out the differences between them, but remembering which is which is really difficult. Here's what I do to remember it. The solute is cute. You're like, well, Mr. Shaver, okay, so you're saying that, you know, a little bit of sugar here is cute? No, I'm saying it's a little bit of sugar. Little things tend to be cute. Think about like a little kitten or a puppy or even little like snakes and crocodiles are really cute. You know, yeah, have you ever seen a little baby crocodile? Oh, it's so cute. You just want to chew off my face, don't you? Aw. So we have a little bit of solute. There tends to be less of it. it. The solute is cute, and it will dissolve into a solvent. So now let, let's, let's try this out here. Let's make some Kool-Aid. We have our Kool-Aid mix, and we got a big jug of water. What's the solute here? Well, the solute is cute. What do you have less of? We have less Kool-Aid mix. And double check your answer. Does it dissolve into the water, into the solvent? Yes, it does. So the solute is the juice crystals. And also, the water here is the solvent. And you know that especially because water is the universal solvent. Whenever you have water, solvent every time. All right? And also, it's, it can't be the other way around. You can't have, you know, two liters of juice crystals with a little scoop of water in it. That's not going to make a delicious drink. Um, uh, okay, how about this one? Uh, what about, let's make some chocolate milk. Eh, I'm going to make it harder for you. I'm not going to use... Um, 
uh, water in this one. So we have our chocolate syrup and we have our glass of milk. Well, if you said that the chocolate syrup is the solute, you are correct. Because it is cute, this little bit of it, and we it dissolves into the milk. The milk would be the solvent. Okay, here's another one. What about this experiment? The salt and ethanol. You put the salt into the ethanol. So what is this solute? If you said salt, you are wrong. If you said ethanol, you are wrong. There is no solute in this case. Nothing dissolves. Salt does not dissolve in ethanol. It doesn't work. So there's no solute in this case because salt and ethanol is a heterogeneous mixture. It is not a homogeneous mixture. Okay? Trick question. All right, one more. Um, what about our supersaturated solution we used to create our uh, rock candy that we're working on still? We did 750 milliliters of sugar to 250 milliliters of water. So what is the solute? What is the solvent? Well, if you said, you know, the solute is cute, so that means the water must be the solute, you are wrong. Because it doesn't dissolve. Yes, in this rare case, the solute is not cute. It's gargantuan. And so the water is actually the solvent. The sugar is still the solute, even though you have more solute than solvent. So the solute is cute is a good first check, but you have to double check does it dissolve? The sugar dissolves into the water. The water does not dissolve into the sugar. All right? So those are your solutes and solvents. But we still don't know where these particles go when they do dissolve. Let's look at paragraph number four. Where do these solutes, sugar and salt, go when they do dissolve into a solvent, water or ethanol? Uh, they do not join together with the molecules of a solvent, water or ethanol, to create a new particle. So the H2O molecule in water, and we have C6H12O6, which is uh, glucose or sugar, they do not bond together into a new type of molecule. They are separate. They do, they, do not, they do not molecularly bond into a new type of particle. They stay apart. Where do these particles go? Uh, the particles of the solute, sugar or salt, actually go in between the particles of the solvent. This is why a mixture of 50 milliliters of sugar and 50 milliliters of water does not add up to 100 milliliters. The sugar simply goes into the spaces that are already there. Think of pouring sand over a container full of marbles and how that the sand would fit in between the spaces of the marbles. For instance, take a look. I have 200 milliliters of marbles and I have 100 milliliters of sand. 200 plus 100 is 200 because that sand fits in between the spaces that are already there. It doesn't take up any new space as it goes. The same is true when solutes dissolve into solvents, like when sugar dissolves into water. We know there are spaces between the particles. In water, the space is fairly big. So when the sugar goes in there, it's like, oh, look, I love you, water. I want to hang out with you, water. So the happy Miss Shaver sugar face particle goes in between those spaces. It doesn't take up any new space. That space was already there. It just goes in between that space. And that's what, and that's why it doesn't take up a whole lot of additional space. It, the volume is not going to be the same. Uh, and that's why 50 plus 50 does not equal 100 when it comes to dissolving. Um, all right, and let's look at our final paragraph. Let's look at how heat affects all of this. Uh, when a solvent, water, ethanol, is hot, it will dissolve more solutes, sugar and salt, faster for two reasons. First, the particles are moving faster because they have more energy and will be able to bump into and separate the solute particles faster. So we know more energy equals faster movement, so they're, they're moving around faster. So in hot water, they're moving around pretty quick. In cool water, they're just kind of cruising around. Not slow enough that they become a solid, they freeze and become ice, and not fast enough that they hit each other so hard they become gas. Um, uh, they're still in liquid form. But consider you have a bowl of chips in front of you, and you're sitting there going, ow, ow. Eventually, you're going to eat that entire bowl of chips, slowly but surely. Same thing with the slow-moving cold particles. It'll come around and grab that sugar or that water or that salt or whatever the solute is that dissolves. Um, but if you move faster, consider that bowl of chips again. But you're going nom 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 nom, eating really fast. You're going to get rid of that bowl real fast. Same thing with the with the water as it moves around. It's going to get rid of that sh sugar or salt or whatever the solute is extremely quickly and dissolve it very fast because the particles are moving so fast. Second, 
Since the solvent particles are moving so fast, they hit each other harder and harder and push each other farther and farther apart, which creates more space between the particles of the solvent. Since the solvent particles have more space between them, the solute particles, sugar or salt, will dissolve faster and more because there are bigger spaces for them to go into. So consider the cold water is pretty close together. It's the sugar like, hey guys, I fit in. Whereas warm water and hot water, there's huge amounts of spaces there. And that's why if you sprinkle sugar on an ice cube, it won't dissolve. There isn't a space. The sugar's like, let me in, guys. Come on. I love you. Let me in. There isn't a space for them. It needs to be in liquid uh, state for there to be space for the solute to dissolve into the salt vent. Um, and so as it heats up, it pushes each other farther and farther apart. And now we have loads of space in between it. We don't have more spaces, but we have bigger spaces. So sort of like if you walked into the classroom and I said, okay, grab a seat, everybody, and there's like, you know, 28 chairs, and you all kind of eventually jostle around and find a seat. But if we walked into a classroom and said, okay, grab a seat, everyone, and there's 28 couches, well, suddenly it's way easier to find a seat. There's, there's spots all over the place. Uh, the number of seats did not increase, but the size of the seats increased. But remember, when it starts to lose energy, it will come close together and squeeze that sugar out uh, as it goes, all right? So make sure you uh, look over that. There's a diagram at the bottom, too. You have this on the back of your particle theory sheet as well to help you with your next center while you're uh, uh, answering questions on that, all right? Hopefully this has been informative, and hopefully now you know how solutions form, why things dissolve, where they go, when they dissolve, how heat affects it, and uh, what a solute and a solvent is. Thanks.